like the idea of putting people in situations that aren't, uh, that aren't normal, you know, for, well, not normal, they're normal to dissidents, like, but they're not normal to normal people like me. Um, and I think that's what I, I, that's where the challenge is, is to try and create that world and make it believable or, you know, as you say, heighten the sensation of, of um, so you, like, we'll never be in that situation, please God, you know. But there's fun to be had out of seeing someone in that situation on a stage. But there's an element of risk there, but there's also the safety of being in an audience or just being an actor, and you can go home and live a normal life. But well, I've been told yourself and myself are getting a bit pally. Pally, <coughs> pally, yeah. Not even at the OC centers. So I'm here looking at And then I hear you're having a cosy little cost of coffee in town. Eh, it's a coffee. It's not a crime, right? Not that, Jay, but I didn't slip the hand there. I don't want to know one way or the other. All you need to know is she's out of bounds. What? She's the OC's daughter. He's not about to let you defy her. His words, by the way. My initial reactions to the character when I first read, it was a, because I've worked with Pat Daly before, I kind of understand his style of writing and it jumps off the page and I kind of, straight away, I kind of got this guy. I kind of said, yeah, I, I know people in similar situations um, with the current climate and all that unemployment and people giving out about having no money, whatever. So, yeah, I kind of got the character right away, I think. I'm not worried about it. I just think about it a lot. And it's close to the definition of worry as you'll get, I think. Is it? <laughs> worry by definition is thinking too much about something. I'm fucking worried, so. <laughs> Things will work out, man. Things will work out. Easy for you to say that. I'm a feckin' plaster. I'm very little by the way of work, I can tell you now. But Pindy, milking the Americans dry up in that factory. Have you nothing on going? Ah, tip it away, you know, like everyone else in the trade. I'm doing the work with two men myself these days. Yeah, Laurel and fucking Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know me too well. I think it does strike a chord with uh, the atmosphere in the country at the time, uh, at this time as well, because everybody, everybody can relate to Martin. I mean, in the opening scene, um, like you're, a, I'm a plaster, but I have very little in the way of work. Uh, Martin um, has no work. You know, um, so people can relate to that, and he's struggling, and and in his struggle, he goes to desperate yeah, lengths, he's desperate, yeah. and he 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 ends up working for a <laughs> an, an organization that's an illegal organization, basically. But he he explains very well in it. I mean, it's it is a comedy, but there are some really poignant moments in it. Like yeah, he's, he's he's talking about you can do nothing without money. You know, he's he's trying to advise him. You know, don't get involved in this, and he's. And Martin is saying, well, I have to. I yeah. can do nothing without money. He has a daughter. He's separated from his wife. His daughter's looking for the new pink eye. Yeah. You know, there's n he has no way of affording that if he doesn't go down this road. I think people can relate to that. Yeah. You know, there's, you know the, the desperation that you'll do for your, for your family. It's kind of, it sets it up and this guy's in this situation and that's kind of the backdrop mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. So I suppose it's... It's, a, it's, an, it's an unreal situation yeah, it's that's real. In a, in a, re in a real yeah. world Yeah, that's what makes it funny. <laughs> <laughs> I see the way you're looking at me, Amy. Don't let this take away from our first night of passion. Our first night of passion. That implies there'll be more. But I'm still raging with testosterone. Raging with insanity. Well, that too. But will I make some breakfast? I can't promise it'll be as good as the performance last night, though. Having time, I'm afraid. The guy gets lucky and he gets the girl in the play. And uh, he's somebody who probably uh, didn't have any great aspirations in that regard at the beginning of the journey. And it's a journey that I think the audience like going on with him, like he's a on the face of it, um, he's not the brightest pea in the pod, um, but he's a, he's a good guy and, and uh, he's an unlikely hero for a play. Um, but I think from word go, the audience seemed to relate to him and to his problems. Stand up to him. He respects that kind of macho shit. Yeah, like I'm so macho. <laughs> you know I'm a walking disaster, don't you? Everything I put behind it wants to shit. It's like, 
the Midas touch, except the opposite. I tell you, I tell you some shit about me. She's quite tough. I think she's she's quite worldly wise. She does change a lot of the the dynamic of the play because it's, there's there's the guys and there's all banter. But it, it I suppose it takes kind of a serious twist when she arrives on the scene for Martin because he's down on his luck and he's really in an, in a dreadful predicament throughout the play. But when he meets her, it kind of changes his life in many ways because he meets someone that he could seriously fall in love with and could bring so much to his life. Unfortunately, her situation, being the daughter of the OC of the dissident group, um, makes it quite difficult for the um, for the love story to continue, you know, so that's, I suppose, that's what makes the play interesting. I don't want you to go. But come with me. It could be the best thing ever happened to us. There's plenty of opportunities in London, but more than here anyway. No, I'm staying. And if you love me, you'll stay too. Just call that bluff. I called the fella's bluff one time. Pulverised that was. Once everybody said he'd dig the head off me if I didn't go away, man. I'm not good at bluff all. <laughs> I'm delighted you love me. You said they were just words. But that was me. Show me some more action to back up those words. I look, now's not a good time for sex. I'm serious! <laughs> tell that to back off, or you're disowned. No, tell you you're pregnant. No, actually, don't. <laughs> don't. Wait. Nah, I'm not here. I'm out with the kingfisher, I'm gonna fucking son. <laughs> I went into this with the eyes open, but one eye anyway. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see you coming. But like I said, it always goes to shit for me. It's what I expected this stage. I think you let it go to shit. I would let this happen to me. Exactly. Exactly. Everything all right? Couldn't be fucking better. <laughs> see, you've recruited already. She thinks I should stay. Put her up to our father. Does she? And what do you think? I don't know what the fucking thing. Would you fuck off for five minutes? I'll piss off, Donald. What can you say now? Doesn't make any difference whether I hear it or not. What I have to say to Martin is none of your business. Oh, is that right? Well, we're about to find out for sure because I'm going nowhere. Just fuck off for five minutes. No, you fuck off and stand up for Martin. You make a decision that isn't driven by your cowardice. Don't try to show to me now. Why not? Martin might think less of you, do you think? Shut up, Anthony. Why? It's not a good time. Hey, what am I missing here? No, finish pack. Read between the lines, Martin. I can't read the fucking lines, let alone in between the lines. <laughs> <laughs> it is extremely funny um, and when you're in a rehearsal room um, or, or at the start of the process when I'm working with Pat and we talk about it as a, as a black comedy, uh, you're terrified of the word comedy. The black part's okay um, and he delivers in spades on that, that angle of the play. And uh, We all, always had a huge amount of discussion about whether to build a play as a comedy. So we were enormously relieved. We had great confidence in the script, but until you hear them laughing on that first rehearsal, you don't know. A door got me a few casual jobs. There was a few casual robberies. There's no bugs in <laughs> No one gets hurt. No one gets hurt. What planet are you on? <laughs> I got hurt. For a whole fucking year. The cops kicked me so hard in the stones, I was pissing blood for a week. The doctor said I should get an ultrasound done on me nuts. Then they said I should get a sperm count done. And guess what? Your foreign blanks. No, but a very low sperm count. And if I want to have kids at some point, I'll have to get UDA or IVF or FBI or some other stupid abbreviation. The audience, for the most part, they're, they're kind of an unknown quantity until you, you know, get them into the theatre and see the play. You can't predict what they're going to do or how they're going to take to it. Um, as much as you might like to, you obviously put your best foot forward in every, pro every production uh, each night, but uh, you don't know how they're going to react. Um, and when you get a good reaction, when they, when they buy into the play and they you know, participate in the play, I mean, there, it's much a participation for them as it is for you know, the, the actors on stage. Um, and when you see that happening, that's, uh, that's where the, the real pleasure is, you know, that someone is actually liking what you've you know, put up there. You know. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, very well done. Uh, the acting was amazing. It's nice to see uh, someone of Jim uh, Nolan's calibre directing and to see him kind of take someone like Pat Daly under his wing and, uh, and uh, bring on a wonderful, quirky script, uh, kind of a strange commentary on uh, a recession in Ireland. I just think it's brilliant to see a local theatre, local 
good look of theatre, that's succeeding, that sells out, that has a standing ovation at the end, I don't think you can ask for more.